Is God truly great? Welcome to another uh, part on this. Me, a sinner. One of the signs I believe of God truly being great in your life is your attitude towards sin. So we're going to turn to Luke 5, 1. And we're going to go through a story in the Bible and we're going to talk about it together. So Luke 5, 1. And it came to pass that... As the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesaret. I pr pronounced that wrong. But I emphasized that they came to hear the word of God. That doesn't happen that much anymore. People today, they just they don't have a hunger and a thirst and a desire for the word of God. And today in English, it comes to you in the form of the King James Bible. Uh, verse 2. And saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. Three. And one of the reasons I think they're washing their nets now that I'm living on the, oh, the coast is the salt. Um, you got to wash all that off every time you use the nets or the salt when it dries, like the net dries, it'll start eating away the net. Verse 3, And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Okay. Verse 4, Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a draught. So, you come across that word, and you think, well, you kind of know what it means. But I went ahead and looked it up just to make sure. So in the Webster's 1828 Dictionary, there's two definitions okay, that apply to this. Uh, definition number seven, the act of drawing a net, a sweeping for fish. But Jesus wasn't saying just throw it in and give it another try. So that's why I went to uh, definition number eight, that which is taken by sweeping with the net as a draught of fishes. Jesus was saying throw it in and you're guaranteed to get fish. Okay. So, draught. All right, going on to verse 5. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word I will let down the net. Okay. How many times does the Lord ask you to do something and you don't think you're capable, but also you don't think it's going to work? I mean, Lord... I've tried doing this video because I've done videos where I've had to do it two or three times because the lighting wasn't right, um, this wasn't right, um, you know, big loud noise happens because I like to try to do it outside, and I'm like, Lord, maybe I'm just not meant to do this, and the Lord's like, give it one more try. I'm like, really, Lord, I failed three times to get this video out, and the Lord's like, give it one more try, but here's the attitude. Um, but your attitude should be, I'll do it. You see uh, Simon, which is Peter, saying that, are you kidding? We've done, been doing this all day, or was it all night? We've been toiled the all night, and we've caught nothing. Are you, are you seriously wanting me to throw it over? Okay, I'll do it. That needs to be our attitude, brothers and sisters in Christ. Always remember Philippians 4.13. It's really been used a lot in my life recently. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Okay. Have that attitude. I'll do it. I might not understand why. I don't think it's going to work. Are you sure? But have the attitude, I'll do it when Jesus asks you to do something. But verse 6 in Luke 5. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they would come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. Now, I don't know how big the boats are, but if you look today, our little boats that we use for fishing, it's still a big boat. So two boats sinking with fish. That would be, be a sight to see. Verse 8. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down on Jesus' knees, fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me. And here's the key. For I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished and all that were with him at the draught of fishes which they had taken. 
Okay? For I am a sinful man. How can you prove that God is great in your life? And real quick, I'm not talking about, well, then that means I need to sin, 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 that grace may abound. You can look that up, and it's another teaching about how we're not to sin, that grace may abound. God forbid we're not to do that. God's grace is going to be there. I mean, we're going to make mistakes, we're going to struggle with sin, and I'm getting ahead of myself. But the difference is, when you're lost, you justify sin. I mean, you've got good morals, but the things that the Bible calls a sin that you don't like, that you love to do, and you don't like the Bible calling it a sin, you justify it. Okay? When you're lost, you have the justify sin attitude. When you get saved, you have the struggle with sin attitude. But I'm not making this out where you've got to be a sinner. I'm talking about your attitude towards sin. What was Paul, or not Paul, Peter, Simon, later called Peter, what was his attitude? Now, I'm not saying we want Jesus to depart from us, but his attitude on sin was, for I am a sinful man. I didn't put this down, but another story in the Bible talks about, um, you know, for I'm sinful and wicked. Just people saying, hey, I'm, I'm a sinner. I, I don't deserve to be in your presence, Lord. I am a sinner. So, a great sign in the Bible, in a Bible-believing, God-fearing Christian's life to show that God is great in your life is your attitude towards you being a sinner. Why do you need to be saved? Because you're a sinner. How are, you, how are you going to preach the gospel to other people if you don't believe you're a sinner? I got saved and I'm not a sinner anymore. Or I got saved and sin's not a big deal anymore. It's just not a big deal. Who cares about sin anymore? I'm saved. Uh, no. One of the big ways of showing how great God is in your life is you're always telling the Lord, thank you, thank you for saving me. You tell others around you, God saved me, a dirty, rotten, filthy, low-down, no-good sinner. So, Romans 3, 9. We're going to turn to Romans 3, 9 real quick. What then? Are we better than they? Talking about saved versus lost when it comes to sin. Are we better than they? No, and no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all, that they are all under sin. Verse 10. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Now I understand we're to be, have a changed life. We're, if you're saved, you are holier because Jesus is in you than the lost world. But we're both under sin. Now, I'm not under the condemnation of sin. And if brothers and sisters of Christ out there that are truly saved, you're not under the condemnation of sin. Jesus paid that price for us, but we're still under the flesh. We're still having to deal with this body of flesh. And the lost world's going to see that struggle. And when you give God the glory for overcoming sin, and I'm hoping I'm not jumping ahead again because I'm really excited about these studies, um, giving God the glory, saying, Lord, I didn't deserve to be saved. That humbleness and that attitude that I am a dirty, rotten sinner and God saved me. He can save you too. The lost world looks at you and they see how great God is in you. They will like it or they'll hate it. But they'll see it, whether they want to admit it or not. Let's see what Paul's attitude was towards him being a sinner. 1 Timothy 1.15 This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. I always tell people, you know what? Paul got it wrong. And I'm not calling God's word wrong, but please hear me out. Paul got it wrong. He's not the chiefest of sinners. I am. This man right here that you're looking at is the chiefest of sinners. And it's only by God's grace that I am saved. And that needs to be our attitude. The lost world's going to see it. Saved brothers and sisters in Christ are going to see it. When you have that attitude that I'm only saved by God's grace, you're giving God all the glory and credit for saving you. Oh, you know, I'm a sinner, but I'm not that bad, you know. I'm a good person. Romans 7, 7, Romans 7 24. Another attitude we need to have. Romans 7, verse 24. O wretched man that I am, 
Notice there's an exclamation point. Oh, wretched man that I am! Screaming it out. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. There's that struggle again. Remember I've said before in other studies, make sure you're feeding the spirit more than you're feeding the flesh. You feed the spirit more, it'll be stronger. You feed the flesh more, it will be stronger. Okay. But once again, there's the struggle with the flesh. As, as Bible-believing, God-fearing, uh, changed life Christians, by, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, we're to struggle with sin. We're not to justify it. We're not to think it's not a big deal. But when we overcome sin, who gets the glory? Oh, I, I was able to overcome this, this sin with my own strength and my own willpower. and It was all me. No, you give God the glory. And the lost world sees that. You give God the glory when you... Lord, thank you for getting me out of video games. Wicked, vile video games. Thank you for getting away from those movies. Thank you for getting me away from the alcohol, drugs, fornication. Whatever your pro the sins that you struggled with, when you, over when, you over when you overcome them, it's because of God's word and what God has done. And you give God the glory. The lost world sees your attitude towards sin, okay? and a lot, most often times they're going to hate it. But when you tell people, God changed my life, you're showing how great God is in your life. Because A, you have the changed life, but you're giving God the glory. Only God could change my life. I couldn't do it. No matter how hard I tried to be a good person, I fail every time. God's the one that helped me. They see the change in you, the physical change. You go from justifying sin to struggling with it, as we talked about. Admitting you're a sinner to a brother and sister in Christ is also humbling. Get into the next part. Right? Uh, when we testify, um, part of the ministry here, I have an email, and I'll go ahead and throw it again, a prayer and test testimony video. It's not just about testifying, saying, this is how I came to the Lord, broken, and how God saved me. When you're saved for brothers and sisters in Christ, a good testimony is your life, your walk with the Lord. I was struggling with this, and God helped me overcome it. God blessed me with this. We really need it. I just got a, a message from a sister in Christ that was praying to get her uh, license back. And praise the Lord, she got it back. God answered her prayers. Okay, it's a testimony that God answers prayers. And it, it lifts me up, hopefully it lifts you brothers and sisters up, that God still listens to people's prayers. Okay. And that God answers prayers. But James 5.16 Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Once again, confessing your faults one to another, saying, I struggle with this. Notice it says faults, not sins. I don't want details, okay? I don't want it. No other brother and sisters in Christ, you have to, you don't want details. You want us to just, someone to say, this is what I'm struggling with. And someone out there could be like, you know what? I struggle with the same thing. But I got into the Word of God. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Thy word, here's an important one, thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. So I tell people, uh, start making cue cards. Write down some gospel message. Get a little stack of uh, memory verses for gospel message. Get a little stack of memory verses for key scriptures. Get a stack of memory verses for eternal security. Time of Jacob's trouble. Um... You know, how God's Word is important. You know, Bible version issue, how God's Word is important. And it says time and time again, God will preserve His Word. And you need to start memorizing Scripture and getting it into your heart. And that's how God helped me overcome that. And that person that's confessing their faults is going to be like, it's going to be an encouragement. God, God got him out of it. And he gave me some advice. I need to get in the Word of God. Always point him to the Word of God. Always point him to Jesus Christ. But you have a testimony on how God got you out of that. How He got your life cleaned up in that area. Okay? 
that shows how great God is in your life. Going about and saying, you know, I just believed in my head. I didn't repent. I didn't confess both in prayer to prove I'm not ashamed of my repentance and belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. I didn't call upon the name of the Lord to save me. I just believed in my head. And you know what? I can do whatever I want. I can look like the world, act like the world, dress like the world. The Bible says, be not conformed to the world, but see, be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You can prove God's will through this, the changed life, not conforming to the world. God reflects more in you when you have a changed life, when you struggle with sin. I don't do that anymore. Why don't you do it anymore? Because uh, I just, you know, I just don't feel it's right. No, why don't I do it anymore? Because God told me that's wrong. God's Word told me that's a sin, and I'm going to stay away from it. So, confessing your faults and experiences because of those faults can encourage the brethren. Testimonies. Let's go back to Luke 5, uh, verse 10. And so was also James and John, the son of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. It's going back up to... Let's see, 10, oh gosh, because I kind of jumped this here, this said, for he was astonished, talking about Simon at nine, and all that were with him as the draw of the fishes which were taken. So Simon was astonished, so here it's saying, and so was also James and John and the son of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. Okay. goes back to the sinning again when you talk about you being a sinner before you got saved and your testimony on how God, you came to God as a broken sinner I've always said this in my testimony video um, when you give a testimony of your salvation it's got to have these parts in it it has to one, it has to have your lost life first thing you do is talk about how the oh, wretched man that I am that I was a dirty, rotten, filthy, low-down, no-good sinner on my way to hell, and I deserve to go to hell. True biblical repentance happens in the heart. Sorrow for sinning against God. People say repentance is admitting you're a sinner. No, it isn't. Oh, repentance means you understand that you're going to hell. No, it isn't. I've had lost people admit that they're sinners, but they want nothing to do with Jesus Christ. I've had lost people admit they're going to hell, but they don't care because they love their sin and they want to continue in their sin. True biblical repentance is sorrow. That's the key. Sorrow for sinning against God. And when you're sorry for sinning against God, you're admitting that you're a sinner. It happens in the heart, not in the head. You understand the consequences of sin and you're sorry for sinning against God. It's that sorrow that makes the repentance work. True biblical repentance. Sorrow for sinning against God. But you need to have your lost life. Your sinful and wickedness, how sinful you were. It doesn't matter if before you got saved, you used to probably say, I was a good person. I didn't kill nobody. You know, I didn't do drugs. didn't do that. It doesn't matter. When you get saved, you realize how vile and wicked of a person you were before you got saved. So you need your past life, how you came to Christ, preaching the gospel, how you came to Christ, how you heard the gospel, and then afterwards you have the changed life, how God changed your life, how God saved you. Okay? Those three parts are so important when you give a testimony, but you leave out the sin. Oh, I just, you know, somebody told me that, uh, you know, Jesus has got to be my Savior, and, you know... Uh, I'm a sinner, we're all sinners, so I just said a little prayer and believed in my head, and I was saved, you know. And at that point, I'm saved, I'm good to go. There's, there's, there's my testimony. But what about the sin? You, you made it like sin wasn't a big deal. Sin is a big deal, that's why Jesus Christ died on the cross. Okay, Matthew 22, 14, remember Jesus said, don't worry, you'll, you'll be fishers of, I want to say it right. Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. 
So Matthew twenty two fourteen. For many are called, but few are chosen. You're going to preach the gospel, and you're going to preach against sin, brothers and sisters in Christ, and a lot of people aren't going to want to listen. These last days, we're supposed to do it. We were supposed to praise and sing hallelujah over every one person that got saved, and people in the past were getting saved. Today, you have more of a appreciation and understanding of why we do that. Because today, it's like someone gets saved, it's far few and in between, and it is definitely worth singing hallelujah, praise the Lord. Okay, give God all the glory. Acts 20:24. 20, but none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. And the ministry, here's the key, which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Right there's what I wanted you guys to hear. And the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus. This ministry is God's. He's allowing me to be a part of it. Okay, the ministry of reconciliation. Okay. Sin is a big deal. You've got to have that in your life. You want God to be great in your life, then you need to have sorrow for sinning against God. That happens before salvation, and that happens after salvation, brothers and sisters of Christ. In your walk with the Lord, you need to have sorrow in your heart for sinning against God every time you sin against God. And it will reflect to the lost world. And it will reflect to brothers and sisters in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.18 And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given us the ministry of reconciliation. Okay? Let people know that they're a sinner, and that they need Jesus Christ, that God made a way to reconcile us, or Jesus made a way for it to reconcile us to the Father. Okay? Sin is important. Go back to Luke 5, uh, verse 11. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. Okay? Now, forsook all, I know it's talking about material things, but instruction in righteousness here, I got to, in righteousness here, I got to think, and it also means sin. I believe that. Forsaking sin after salvation. There has to be a changed life. That's how God is reflected as being truly great in your life to you that God is great. If you don't have a changed life, then God isn't great in your life. God isn't, you don't think God is great. You can say it with your lips, but your actions say that God isn't great. Okay? The changed life. Uh, Luke 9.23, And he said to them all, If any man, any man, will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sins. When you take up your cross, you're remembering that and you're denying yourself. You're putting down the flesh. You're saying, I'm going to live by the word of God and I'm going to do my best to do what's right. Um, that's why when I tell, I got told this by a brother in Christ, that when you drop your cross, you repent, forsake, and pick your cross back up. Some people say move on. Pick your cross back up, and you continue going, and continue to deny yourself. I fell into sin, you repent, that sorrow in your heart for sinning against God, you forsake, you turn from that sin, and get away from it, and then you pick up your cross, and you continue walking with the Lord. You follow Jesus Christ. And people will see it. Brothers and sisters in Christ will see it when you talk about it. If you have brothers and sisters around you, I know it's very rare to have brothers and sisters around you, but they will see it. The lost world is going to see it. Why do you think the lost world gets angry at you? Are you holier than thou? Well, I have the Holy Spirit in me, so yeah. I'm, I have a changed life. I drop my cross sometimes, but I keep picking it back up. And I'm following Jesus Christ. It's His cross that I'm picking up and carrying. I think this verse right here coincides, and I didn't put it on here, and I forgot the guy's name, so I'll have to put it at the bottom of the screen. But remember, um, there was a man that was asked to carry Jesus' cross. Now, I'm not saying I was nailed to the cross, but this has good 
correlation between those two verses. We're to pick up our cross and follow Jesus daily. Okay? It's a sign in our life that God is great to us. Um, John 14, 23, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. I keep telling people this is a perfect verse of the Godhead. Perfect verse. Jesus, God the Father, only one God, God the Father, in you. And who do we have in us? The Holy Spirit. I don't have Jesus Christ physically in me. I don't have God the Father's soul in me. I have the Holy Spirit in me. But this just says that basically you have all three in you. The Godhead. Okay. Uh, you can read Ephesians 5 sometimes, but this is talking about you want Jesus to be great, the world to show the world that you love Jesus, you're going to keep his word. Perfect written word. King James Bible. In English. But you can go through Ephesians 5 sometimes. It talks about the changed life. And um, I think that's the verse that talks about a wife and husband's responsibility to one another. Um, because getting married, your life's going to change a little bit um, when you get married. So, uh, helping brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus overcome sin by pointing them to the Word of God and testifying how God helped you overcome certain sins in your life through His perfect written Word. Sin is a big deal, brothers and sisters in Christ. Never, ever, and I've done it before, get a, lighter, get a light attitude towards sin. You talk to these easy believism. Uh, people who think they've earned salvation with their faith, or you talk to people that, oh, I sinned, ah, oh, no, I can make up to it. I'll do five good works this week and make up for my sin. Uh, they think they can buy God's grace with good works. And those are the two sets of people you have out there. No matter what they try to say, those are the two sets of people. It's all works. It's all based off of works. It's not God that saved me. I saved myself. God's in there somewhere, a little bit, but I save myself. I'm saved by my faith. Never have a light attitude. When you talk to those people, they have such a light attitude towards sin. The Bible says you're not to do this. Oh, you know, that we're just going to have to agree to disagree. Uh, no, we don't. Okay? When you make a stand for sin, and that God helped you overcome sin, and that the changed life, you give God the glory for the changed life that you have, God's going to reflect as being truly great in your life and your heart it's not just your lips saying God is great your heart is being reflected through your life God is truly great in my life um, so let's remember that uh, your attitude towards sin shows how great God is in your life your attitude towards sin okay? I'm a dirty rotten sinner saved by Jesus Christ Brothers and sisters, I have faults. I have things I struggle with. Can you help me with this? What's your experience? Um, can I have, like sometimes people will say they have this problem and people will respond back with verses from the Bible, which is the best response, that, to encourage them to overcome that fault, okay, that sin. So you can show the lost world how great God is in your life by the changed life, by your attitude towards sin. You can show and encourage brothers and sisters in Christ how great God is in your life by what He's helped you overcome, your, overcome your faults, and encouraging them and witnessing and testifying to brothers and sisters in Christ how God helped you. So, um, just remember to give God the glory for cleaning up your life, and do not, do not have a light attitude towards sin. Uh, you want God to reflect as being great in your life? Have a strong distaste and hatred for sin, okay, in your life mainly. Okay, preach against sin out there, but um, what is it? The judgment must first begin at the house of God, okay? You want God to be great in your life? Have a changed life. Repent, forsake, move on. Pick up that cross daily. Have a strict attitude towards sin. I'm going to stumble, I'm going to fall, Lord, but help me to hate sin. Help me to fall on my knees and have sorrow for sinning against you. Help me to encourage the brethren. 
when they are falling into sin and temptation. So, I hope this helped, brothers and sisters in Christ, and encouraged you. I'll see you in the next video.